Hi, everyone. It's Paula Swazi here. I'm so happy to host uh, our artist Q&A for Don Pasquale with Javier Camarena. He's one of the world's greatest operatic tenors, singing particularly in the bel canto repertoire. So I'm thrilled that he's able to join us from uh, Switzerland. He's with us, I believe, from what Hello. city in Switzerland are you in? Hey, <laughs> nice to see you. Welcome. Nice to be here. <laughs> and where are you in Switzerland? What city are you in, Javier? Uh, the city, the city's name is Dietlikon, uh, mm -hmm. and it's in the in the canton from Zurich. I'm actually like ten minutes away from Zurich. Oh so, wow! Yeah. So you're in the German-speaking part of Switzerland. Yeah. Yeah, and, <laughs> and do you um, speak German well? Ambition. Uh, yeah, I speak, I speak a little bit. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, good. <laughs> yeah, definitely in English is better, much, much better uh, than, than German. But yeah, I, 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 I understand quite well. That's great. And it's so beautiful there. Yeah, 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 yeah. peaceful. And uh, now it, the, the summer is finally arriving. So we have very warm days now and uh, sun shining, so it's everything nicer. Awesome. Allergies come back, so yeah. <laughs> of course, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dark side of this. But, right, yeah. <laughs> right. I'm actually in Wisconsin now where I, um, my husband grew up here and mm -hmm. we lived here for a very long time before we moved to New York. So I'm in the basement of my mother-in-law's house in mm -hmm. Mil Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So um, mm -hmm. it's cool here, which is great. I prefer that to the extreme heat of New York City for sure. So Javier, we're gonna talk a little bit about Don Pasquale, but mostly we're gonna talk about you and your life in opera. Um, some of our campers were with us earlier in the season when we weren't doing camp and we were doing the uh, summer opera, um, not the camp, but the, the free student streams. And we did Fille du Regiment, but lots of people are new to our group here. So I thought it would be fun, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. to do another one of your little life stories for us. So we would do, I'll set my watch. I don't have my phone, so I have an, uh, wait, where's the camera? There it is, an old fashioned watch, which a lot of campers probably don't know what it is, but it's a watch. <laughs> it's a thing that you wear on your wrist. It keeps time. Um, and I'll set it to 90 seconds and we'll hear a little bit about you. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, go. Tell us something about your life story, beginning to end. Okay, so um, uh, I'm from Mexico, Jalapa, Veracruz in Mexico. I began my studies in 1995 in, in my hometown. Uh, then I moved to another city in Mexico, in Guanajuato. I finished uh, my uh, degree in music by and also singing by 2005. 2004, I won the national contest, uh, singing contest in Mexico City. And that gave me the chance to make my debut in opera uh, um, in, in Palacio de Bellas Artes in Mexico City. And two years later, I moved to uh, Zurich to the Opera Opera Studio, International Opera, opera Studio from uh, Zurich Opera House. And uh, I was very fortunate, like six months after that, I made my debut in the Opera House uh, singing L'Italian in Algeri. Um, actually, that same year, 2007, I made my audition for the Metropolitan Opera House, and I was invited to make my debut uh, with Armida, a production for it was I think it was 2010, and I had to cancel because I I was part of the of the solist ensemble in Zurich, and there was another project for me. So my debut at the Metropolitan Opera House was in 2011 with El Barbiere di Siviglia, and. Um, and I'm, I feel really blessed and I, I am very happy to be uh, almost every season uh, in, the, in the Metropolitan Opera House. It's a theater that I love. And, um, and yes, I sing uh, normally and most of the times um, operas from the Bel Canto period. Um, I, I, I love Donizetti. I sing a lot of Rossini, but I love, I love particularly Donizetti. And of course I sing also uh, some Bellinis here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. That was 
a little over 90 seconds, but it was really good because I know we have one of our video questions um, that I want to go ahead and have Dan play our very first uh, one, which is a pretty cute one um, that asks a very specific question of you, Javier. We'll see if Dan has that read. <laughs> I love the little baby walking in front of the camera. <laughs> How high can I sing? How high can you sing? And this is it really can <laughs> <laughs> to the infinity and beyond. <laughs> well, that was like here, there. Now, yeah. um, uh, I during warm up, warming ups, I I can go up to um, to the high F, the one that we have in Puritani, for example. In the practical, uh, in the practical moment, is a sound that I don't like and that it's uh, quite risky. So on stage, I go up until um, um, emo. That would be the highest on stage. And that feels the most confident in terms of the high. Yeah, I, I, ha I have done that in uh, Lucia de la Marmur, for example, which is um, in the part of the duo. Uh, the duet, mm -hmm. and they are um, doing. Uh, uh, I'm learning now in French, so I have my head a little bit. Uh, um, I don't remember the, the words. I, I'm sorry, but I'm learning now in, in French, so it's a little bit confusing. But um, Yes, this is the, the, the highest uh, note I sing on stage. And so that's in Lucia de la Memor, you yeah. said. Um, when you're putting that together, do you and the woman playing Lucia and the conductor, do you guys work together to decide which, okay, are we going to go up to the E? Are we going, what are we doing? Do you guys take some time in rehearsal to well, talk through that? Normally, this 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 little part in the in the duet in the opera is normally cut it or switched. Uh, the tenor sings the the part of the soprano, which goes to a high C, the one from the the uh, La Fille de Rosemont, mm -hmm. and the soprano can go to the emo emo. Um, but uh, I I only had I I have I have sing. Just a couple of times, uh, Lucia. The first one was in, in Madrid, and the second one was in uh, um, in uh, Munich. Uh, but I mean, I I only arrived saying, "Let's sing what is written," because actually, is that what what Donizetti wrote for this uh, duet and in this part in specific? So um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's normally a, the, a surprise reaction because. As I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is always coded. And it's like, oh, wow, so yeah. And then everybody is very excited. I am very excited also because <laughs> it's really, really like beautiful and like poof, uh, very bright uh, moment in, in, in the opera and in, in the duet. So it's, it is really, really exciting. The first time I, I could sing uh, Lucia was really, I mean, two amazing Lucia. So uh, I, I can't ask for better. Um, the first time was with uh, Lisette Oropesa, second uh, time, Pretty Yende. So two amazing Luc Lucias and great colleagues. So it was very easy to to, um, to um, decide what to do. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you for that question to the kids from Kentucky. That was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you. Yeah. Buzz Lightyear and Baby. Yes, Buzz Lightyear. And I wasn't, was that Cinderella? I wasn't sure what the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But maybe it was Cinderella. So, <laughs> um, Don Pasquale is another fantastic opera. So, I love this opera. I've directed it a few times. Um, and I grew up in a, my parents were first generation Italian immigrants. And so I set it in Little Italy in the US in the 1900s when Norina was like an Irish immigrant. And it's really a fun 
um, the relationship between she and Ernesto is always an interesting thing to play around with. And in this production, how did you approach Ernesto and um, how did you make him sort of come across as somebody that has strength that, you know, Norina would want to marry because she's a pretty tough person. She's smart and um, she's really on the ball. Yeah, yeah, she's already a widow. That's how it's described by Donizetti in the libretto. So uh, we are supposing she has some uh, life experience, of course. And Ernesto is is described like like the, like the young uh, uh, nephew from uh, Don Pasquale, which is going to um, how you how you say that. Um, when uh, you know when the when the when Don Pasquale dies, uh, all his oh he's going to yeah he will inherit Don Pasquale inherit, yeah inherit uh, Don Pasquale uh, um, all the all the things all from the Don Pasquale. Money. So um, it's it's fun it's it, it's funny to uh, almost every uh, every single time I I have the chance to sing uh, Ernesto. It's always like he is. Uh, uh really confident that he will have this um this from Don Pasquale how you say this again yeah the inheritance inheritance from 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 uh Pasquale and normally it's like like he doesn't care and he is very like easy easy way with life and you know and and I think it's a little bit uh, deeper than that, uh, Ernesto as a character. Um, uh, he lives with with uh, his uncle, we don't know why. Uh, right. It's never said in the opera, so um, we, don't, we don't know exactly why. But of course, um, he is certain that he will have it because maybe that's the only family that Ernesto, uh, that Don Pasquale uh, just, uh, he has. But we are, we, I, I I mean we also didn't, don't know what does he does what does he do with his life, right? So we have to create um, a life uh, for Ernesto, and I like to think him uh, uh, about him, uh, yes, as as a young man uh, that he actually uh, enjoys to be with his uncle. Um, is not there just by compromise, uh, right. or because he, 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 he because he is going to have this uh, inheritance from from Pasquale. It's not only that that moves him to be with him, and um, but the idea of 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 uh, having a decided future for him, because the interest from Don Pasquale is to marry, <clears throat> sorry, to marry Ernesto. With a with a wealthy uh, uh, woman, to maybe to insure, insure uh, a little bit the, uh, his his future, and Ernesto doesn't want this. He's seriously in love with uh, with uh, with Norina. We don't know neither how they met, uh, but he's really crazy about her, and it's so in love with her that he is not willing to sacrifice her happiness. Because he's 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 considering himself poor, right, right. So um, in a certain way, it's it's a it's it's a crazy way of thinking now. Because you say, okay, you're poor, you work, <laughs> right, right. But, but uh, I don't know. This 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 was some kind of pride that it was in the, in, in that time. You know, we are talking about 1943, no, 1843, 1843 yeah, 1843, when this was composed. So maybe the, the, the ideals and, and all this uh, 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 philosophy of life back then was completely different than what we uh, know now. Right. But he didn't want that kind of future of, of, of uh, sorrow, uh, economical sorrow for Norina. So for Norina, right. Her love because he doesn't have the inheritance anymore. Because of the of, of the of the planning of of Malatesta that he doesn't know, so um, I I like to think about also him as very decided, very uh, uh, well known, and 
even if he come back at the end of the first act saying and saying to the uncle, why are you doing this to me? And, you know, complaining and realize all the plot that is happening around him. Um, uh, it, it's also um, part of pride and, and uh, yeah. And at, the end, at the end, he's moved by love. Right, and he wants to be able to take care of Norina. That yes. is yeah. his responsibility, particularly yeah. in that time period that a man would not marry a woman unless he could provide yeah. for her. Yeah. And so, and he's not willing to bring what he feels would be to bring Norina to a life of poverty because yeah. he really fully loves her. And I think that key is that's it like to make sure that ernesto is um i mean his name is ernesto right it, it's it has this sort of earnest truth he's very he knows right from wrong and it's really important to him to show mm -hmm. that and to be part of that all the time um yeah. and i think you know javier you have that you have such a wonderful energy when you bring into these characters, you're able to bring exactly that, that sort of truth and somebody who's going to do what he believes is right. And I think yeah. that's the key. And yeah. it makes him equally as strong, right? In a completely different way from Norina, but then you can finally see the two of them and how they can be together. Yeah. Speaking of which, apparently um, in our Global Opera Summer Camp, there's a little thing about your favorite candy and why it's like uh, the, the opera that we're talking about. So my favorite candy this week, because <laughs> I like candy, are peanut M&Ms. And I thought of those because I think about Norena as this very hard, strong-willed, but on the outside, she's got this lovely candy coating, you know, like she's a really fun person, but she's tough. She's not going to take anything lying down. There we go. No, she, she, sweet she, treat. She, knows, she knows about life. Uh, yeah. We can see that right from the beginning at, the, at uh, her first uh, cavatina and the, well, her aria. And he's describing the, 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 um, how you say cavalier in, in, in English? Yeah, the, the man of the world, right? The... Yeah, I yeah, know she's describing the, the, the gentleman that it's, right. uh, you know, wailing and sacrificing for love. And then she's, and then she's uh, mocking about that. Right. <laughs> yeah, sure. I know how this works. And I know if I only smile, everybody's going to be on my feet. So exactly. she, she knows about life. Uh, about life and that's why she also agrees to do this plot with Malatesta. Right. To, you know, uh, um, against. Uh, yeah, possibly, against. Don't in order to have a, a benefit for, for Ernesto, obviously for her. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have another question on video that I would love for Dan to give to us at this point. Hi, I'm Dakota, and I'm from Sandusky, Ohio. My question for Javier is, how many years did you have to study before you became an opera singer? Mm. So Dakota from Sandusky, Ohio, thank you. Um, Javier, you told us a little bit in your life story. Um, it seems like it took about 10 years. Yeah, hello Dakota, thank you for your question. So, um, Actually, yeah, I, I began 1995, so by year 2001, 2000, um, th then I thought I could continue studying to be an opera singer. And after that, uh, it's, 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 I think when you, when you're, um, when you're concentrated, when you are very uh, aware and conscient about where's the place when you were you you want to arrive, your goal, um, everything comes uh, in in synchrony synchrony uh, synchronicity synchronized yeah. synchronized synchronized with with all the effort you are going you are doing each day, so. For me, um, to think about me as an opera singer, 
it took me a while actually <laughs> and it was maybe like seven years after I began the studies and um, at the end uh, it was yeah around almost 10 years to say okay I, I think I can make something with this uh, with this career and and sing so yeah more or yeah. less but it, it, this is a career you don't you don't stop studying and and growing and learning and updating so that's what is fascinating about it yeah so i just it's funny dan thank you for putting this up on our screen from annika i was just going to read this what advice would you give to young singers who are entering college who want to create a career in opera, both advice about the industry and also emotional advice about how to get through it. So, you know, for us, if you're going into college, you're usually around 17 or 18. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've been studying at home with a singer, maybe with a singing teacher, maybe you haven't, maybe you're starting to make this choice. What kind of advice would you give Javier um, to somebody at about that age? Mm. I, I think I, I would try to translate. <laughs> uh, I think I, I, I for, for for beginning uh, for starters, I will give the same advice my 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 first teacher gave me. This career is about uh, stamina, you know, like like res res uh, resistance, that's that yeah, all? Yeah, yeah, um, stamina is good, like um, persistence. Persistence, and, uh, yeah. And not about speed. Uh, you need a lot of, of, of patience also because um, every, every single person, every single uh, artist or artist in process will have their, their own uh, path and you have to trust in, in in the things that you can and also in the things you can't do and that's that's kind of hard because sometimes you are going to compare yourself with another uh, colleagues or you know like the all the, the people the people who is in your generation studying the same that you're studying so it it it's it's all about uh, persistence. It's all about um, discipline and and, um, and be constant and also uh, believe in in your teacher. The first years to build a solid base, technical base, in which you can work on uh, the the next years and develop your singing. Um, that will be the first one. It's not about it's, it's about persistence, not speed. You have to be, you must be a musician, not only think yourself about a, like a singer. And when I, when I see, say a musician, you really have to know uh, to read music and to understand harmony and, you know, be really uh, well concentrated in this and, and, and all the theoretical part of music is all, some, also that something you must um, study and learn. Um, you must be aware this career is it's uh, it's a jealous one, and uh, once you are devoted to it, it demands from you most of the time all your attention, all your passion, all your well, let's say all your love also. Yeah, and your energy. Uh, and you have to give yourself to that. You must give yourself to that most of the times. <laughs> um, and eventually, it will allow it will it will allow you <laughs> to share to share you with uh, with life. <laughs> uh, so you have to be very strong, and you have to build uh, this strength. This strength uh, also, I mean. Uh, being confident about what you are doing by your love for for music for art and singing um but also with the trust in people around you your family and the people that can be next to you and supporting you because i think that's very uh, very very important to have especially in the first years uh, in, in during studies and the first years on your career because it's going to be hard 
yeah. and also you know, to build a, like an armor. <laughs> yeah, that's that emotional piece. Yeah, yeah. Because um, we are working in in something that keep that it's meant to be shared with other people, and is something that is going to be, uh, let's say, qualified in a sub very very subjective subjective way. Yes. So you really have to love yourself, but you really have to be also very humble to realize that you are not, uh, we say this in, in Mexico, we are not a golden uh, uh, a coin of gold <laughs> right. that everybody's going to love you. You have to really be uh, aware that um, you're going to be qualified and some people are going to love you, some people are going to hate, to hate you. <laughs> and you have, you have, you must have, uh, in you, uh, the 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 balance, uh, you know, to take what it's uh, best for you. You can also take those uh, um, those bad, let's say, bad things or bad bad reviews or you know bad comments, and process it in, yeah. in you to make it useful. Because maybe some. Somewhere there can be some of some some th truth, something, something yeah, yeah that can help you. That can help you. So uh, yeah. yeah, this is, is, is going to be hard. It is not an easy career. It, it is it is not. Uh, I mean, we we think about it like like uh, like the glamour and uh, you know <laughs> the spotlights and so. But it's really really a very hard demanding career and uh, and be I think. I, I don't know if I was clear, but be aware of, of, of all these little things. I that think will help you. Yeah. I think this was fantastic. I want to break this down just a little bit. I think this idea of finding a teacher and finding people that you trust in the beginning is vital. So if you're a singer, I was studying directing, finding somebody who can mentor you, who you trust, who can really. Um, take care and help you build your technique is the first part of it. The second part of it is this emotional piece, right? Um, because you will get bad reviews and you'll have people who want to tell you how much they hated the show you did, which is really hard when you've put your heart and soul yeah. into it. So you have mm -hmm. to find a way. I had somebody tell me once, um, now this was back when newspapers were in paper form, right? They were hard copies. Mm -hmm. And they said, now remember Paula, today's bad review is tomorrow's birdcage liner. You know, meaning the bird will poop on it tomorrow. And, <laughs> and it was helpful for me because it was the first really bad review I've had. It was in a national newspaper. I didn't answer my phone for like four days. This again, pre-cell phones, pre-answer yeah, true. And I just was devastated. and. I thought that's it. I'm never going to direct again, you know. And then this friend of mine called me and he was like, "Paul, you got to chill out. Like this is one moment and they didn't like it and that's that." And and of course he was right. Like this was, you know, 30 years ago and I'm still doing it. So, um I survived, but you have to find people who can help you through that, right? There were other people at that point in my life who called me and they were like, hey, your, your name was in the paper. And I was like, did you read what it said? And they were like, well, I don't know. I just saw that your name was there. And I was like, oh, yeah. right. Like, so you have to um, find your path through. So like, I don't read reviews now when I do a show. I just, you know, I have people collect them you know, friends, whatever. And then I wait until it's over and then I read them. Um, and I know a lot of singers do that. They just wait till the end and then they look at them. And I talked to one singer one time who said her agent collects all her reviews for the year and then holds them. And then the agent goes through. And if there's a similar through line, like if there's some comment about things that are the same through all of them, then the agent may talk to the singer and say, hey, you might want to think about this, you know, in a way to utilize, as you're saying, Javier, mm -hmm. some of the bad reviews, right? I remember last time we spoke, you talked about your first daughter of the regiment and how 
you yeah. were called out for your acting, you were kind of stiff. Somebody asked a question, Hudson asked a question about, do you have to learn how to act? Um, and while I will say that nowadays there is more acting taught as part of singers' lessons, the main thing is that you have to be able to sing really well, that that's gonna be the first thing that will get you jobs. On top of that, yes, you wanna know how to act and that can come with time. And mm -hmm. once you have your technique, you can add layers on top of it. And I think it's a process. Yeah, that to, to, maybe for, for, for completing this is, I, I was saying you must make yourself a musician, think yourself as a musician, but also, uh, like an extra for for singers because we have we have words to express more directly the things uh, through music. You have to learn languages. That's very 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 important part. Also, uh, you must be really 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 like understand and speak really speak all uh, all these languages. Mainly, of course, Italian, uh, French, German, uh, Russian. If you want another ones. But those will be like the main main languages you will be working on in, in opera. Uh, of, of course, we have some uh, like Czech and Czech, like Borgia, some, yeah. uh, you know. But mainly, this is this uh, like this base. Um, I always, I always when I, I am doing some uh, <laughs> um, Instagram lives, I normally say this: um, if you are, if you are. English speaker, try to learn some Spanish. If you are a Spanish uh, speaker, trying to learn some English because at the end, English, uh, uh, my, no, English is, is like the, the, the universal language and that uh, allows you to, to communicate in many, many, many uh, parts of the world. But also I think Spanish is also very important because it's all the, all the continent, the, the American continent, and you have also, um, uh, Spain and all this, uh, another, this, there are so many, many countries that, that speak also Spanish. So it's very important in general to learn all, all this and for singers, Italian, French, uh, German, like bass. Totally, and for directors as well. And while you're young, if you can study those languages, do it because your brain will remember them so much better. I mean, I'm chugging away at my Italian, you know, I grew up my parents spoke Italian when they didn't want us to understand what they were talking about when they had secret conversations. Yeah. So, you know, I studied Italian, but actually German was the first language I studied in opera. So I ended up, I, most of my career I've spent doing a lot of German operas. I studied French as a kid and that came back to me um, when I started studying Italian. Everything I spelled was like, I spelled it like the French instead of like the Italian. So you know, it's just, it's great to have that and it will help you both in rehearsal and when you're working on a piece to understand structure of language and context. Um, I think those are really important. Um, now, we speaking of different languages, we have a fantastic video question, both in Spanish and English. So Javier, we're gonna let you listen to this. Okay. Hola, mi nombre es María y soy de México. El día de hoy tengo tres preguntas para ti. Hello, my name is María. I'm from Mexico. Today I have three questions for you. Uno, ¿qué extrañas de México? Dos, ¿qué hiciste para seguir motivado en tu camino hacia el éxito? Tres, ¿qué estilo de música escuchas mientras no escuchas ópera? Muchísimas gracias por tu tiempo. Ha sido un honor. Las voy a repetir en inglés. Number one. What do you miss from Mexico? Number two. How did you kept unmotivated on your way to success? Number three. What kind of music do you listen while you're not listening to opera? Thank you so much for your time. This was an honor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Maria. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Maria. Uh, so, I will answer both in Spanish and English. <laughs> Lo que más extraño de México, obviamente, es a mi familia, a mis amigos, uh, la calidez de la gente y la comida. Eh, sobre todo los tacos al pastor. Um, extraño mucho todo eso. Eh, 
pero bueno, la vida sigue y eh, ya van prácticamente 18 años que estoy fuera de México y, y bueno, o sea, me voy acostumbrando, pero no dejo de extrañar eso. Dos, ¿qué me mantuvo motivado? Eh, eh, estaba eh, siempre, siempre tuve muy claras las metas, siempre tuve muy claro a dónde quería llegar, siempre tuve muy claro qué es lo que quería hacer eh, y me aferré a ello. Eh, y el resto era, era confiar en que mi esfuerzo en algún momento iba a tener esa recompensa. No es fácil, no es fácil, pero bueno, hay que tener mucha fe. ¿Y qué tipo de, escu qué, qué tipo de música escucho? Me gustan muchísimo los boleros, me gusta muchísimo, eh, yo le digo jazz light. <risa> eh, me gusta mucho Nora Jones, me gusta mucho Diana Krall, me gusta mucho uh, Maroon 5. Eh, entonces, <risa> Escucho muchísimas, muchísimos eh, eh, géneros eh, y eso casi, casi que es siempre. Es, es muy raro que yo escuche ópera. <laughs> okay, so in English, um, I miss from Mex what I miss from Mexico the most. I, of course, I miss my family, I miss my friends, I miss, I miss uh, the warmth of of the the people in 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 my country and and the food. Tacos al pastor is the, the, the thing I miss the most. Um, and also good tequila or mezcal. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what keep, kept me motivated? I was very concentrated in what I wanted to achieve and I wanted to do. And I just, I, 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 I could not uh, see myself doing something each day to achieve that. So uh, I think it's also a matter of faith. Uh, I, I, I was very faithful on the things I wanted to, to do with my life. And I was so, I, I, I'm, I'm still so in love with music and so in love with opera. And I discover, and every time I learn something new, it's like I, I feel I grow. So that's something that really keeps me motivated Till, till, till now. And uh, the last, it was uh, what kind of music, uh, maybe you understand, understood already some names. What music do I listen to if I'm not listening to opera, which is almost every single day. I, I, I must say I, I don't listen to much opera. Uh, but I love, uh, <laughs> I love Bolero, which was a uh, like romantic song back in the 1920s or something like that. Um, It is very romantic and it's beautiful uh, poetry also in the in the lyrics. So I like I love bolero, and um, also I love uh, I say like liked jazz, <laughs> which Diana Krall, Murray Jones, those are like I, I love them, and uh, I love Maroon Five also, and um, yeah, many many others. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open. <laughs> and it's fun too. I know when I'm working on an opera and I'm studying hard and I'm in rehearsal all day, when I go home, I don't, that music's in my head. So I really try to listen to other things to yeah. get, get a little break. I love, I'm an old Beatles and Bruce Springsteen. You know, I grew up in New Jersey. So Bruce Springsteen's, you know, my heart, my <laughs> husband loves Frank Sinatra. So we listen to a lot of that kind of, Rat Pack music. Um, so yeah, we we have it all going. And nowadays it's so interesting, like you can have so much different music at your fingertips, which is not what I grew up with, of course. I was listening to records and tapes. And so it's an interesting time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's another little um, thing that's been going on. Sorry, campers, I know I waited too long to do joke o'clock. It's joke o'clock. So campers submit their jokes and I will try to read them. So here we go. Let's see what our first one is. Josh from Chicago says, have you seen my book of opera puns? Yes, it's over at your house. <clears throat> over at your house. <laughs> Thanks, Josh from Chicago. Okay, here's Gavin in Utica, New York. What's a mummy's favorite music type? Rap. 
<laughs> right? They're all wrapped up. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Those are very cute. Now do we have, we'll save the last one for the end of our time. All right, we've got another video question, I think. Uh, yes, we have one more. I will say, after, after I will say a joke, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, good, you have a joke for us after. Okay, fantastic. All right, let's have our video and then we'll. Hi, my name is Lucia and I'm from Manasol, Wisconsin. My question is, who was your biggest influence? Like, who inspired you to sing? My other question is, what is your favorite sound? You don't have to answer that, but yeah. Hi, Lucia from Wisconsin. Nice to see Hi. you. Uh, so your influence. Yeah. Um, I think, um, I yes, I think the main in the, the main influence in my first years were several. Uh, I, I, I loved Cecilia Bartoli, uh, which I, I I I call myself very fortunate because I know her personally. We have worked in very in several um, projects together, and she's uh, as amazing and beautiful person as as a singer and artist. And and of course, I think in the early years, Pavarotti was one of the of the biggest biggest influences I had. And after that, I met Fritz Wunderlich, who I think it's, mm. I, I love the sound of his voice. I love the color, the way he says, uh, and the way he communicates. It's, it's I, I just love uh, Fritz Wunderlich. He's my favorite tenor all time. And I quite not catch the last. The other question was, what's your favorite sound? But Fair. you don't have to answer that, she said. But I'm it's curious. The laugh, laugh of my of my kids, the laugh of my daughter. Ah. <laughs> That's fantastic. Sorry. So the joke. <laughs> I must say a joke. Yeah, tell us a joke. I hope I can translate it well because it's very nice in Spanish. <laughs> so um a tenor goes to a, uh, uh, with a pediatri pediatrician. Is it the one for the babies? Yeah, for the so, kids. Yeah. And he goes very concerned to the pediatrician because he, he arrives and, sees, and he says, you know, doctor, I don't know what happens with my with my son because I, I I have this voice that everybody in every part of the world they love. And I begin to sing him and I sing to him uh, um, uh, lullaby. And he cries. And I don't know why, and I am very concerned. What I can, what can I do? So, doctor says, okay, next time, uh, come next time with and bring uh, your baby. So you show me what you do, and then we realize what is happening. So he goes again and he brings his baby, and he says, okay, show me what are you doing? No, uh, I don't know the words in English for for this, but it says. Duerme tedia, que bien el coco y pensia. Oh, that's fantastic. So yes, that's rock by baby in English. That oh, that's great. You know, my nephew, who's now in his late 20s, I was directing Don Pasquale in Cleveland, Ohio. And I was staying with my sister who lives there, and my nephew was like three. Uh, and she brought him to a rehearsal. I said, Well, bring him in. He can you guys can see what we do and stuff. And they, it was Norina and Ernesto and they were singing and he crawled under my sister's chair and put his hands over his ears because it was too loud. Mommy, make it stop. <laughs> you know, when, when I, when I, when I was studying my, my son, uh, now he's, he's going to be 11 mm -hmm. in December. Um, <laughs> he was, a, he was a baby. He was like two years old. So sometimes I used to, sit on the couch and uh, while maybe watching a movie or 
playing some video games because I'm very fan of video games till now. Ah. Um, so I like playing and in my head. I, I'm just going mechanically with the hands, but in my head I'm repeating uh, what I have to sing. Sometimes I'm singing while while playing. Strange, but true. <laughs> true story. <laughs> uh, so I remember I had my my little boy like beside me. So I was like playing, and I think I don't remember what I was studying. Maybe it was because if I'm tutor or something, I was just, like singing, la, 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 and and suddenly I feel the hand of my baby and goes like this. Like this. <laughs> Daddy, shut up. <laughs> oh, you know, the kids are definitely <laughs> truth tellers. They are not yeah. going to get away with, get away with anything. All right, we've got another video question. Yeah. I think it just came in. Uh, this is just, uh, we get the, not a video. Okay. I'm going to let you read that because I don't. Yeah, yeah, we'll read it in, in it. Uh, hello, Senora Camarena. I'm learning Spanish, so uh, I forgive myself for, for my grammatics if it's wrong. Here's my question. What's your favorite type of opera for singing and and your favorite uh, kind of acting, maybe? Maybe. Okay, so uh, I am, uh, as I already said, I am a bel canto tenor, so I love bel canto, uh, but I, Outside this repertoire, which I'm going to begin to to work on this new path uh, for the next years, the French opera is something I really really love. Also, I already sang uh, Per Fishers, which is uh, an opera that I really really enjoy very much singing. Uh, but uh, in the bel canto uh, repertoire, I think my favorite till uh, yeah. Is Lucia di Lammermoor. I, I find it so, so beautiful, and the, I love the role of Edgardo. So this is my really favorite opera. About acting, I don't know what what to answer about this because I never had a proper uh, acting uh, like coaching or training uh, in not in, not in my school neither. So I learned uh, by working on stage with several uh, directors. Uh, I learned very much with, I remember I made a Japanese opera called uh, Jutsuru. It was sung in Japanese and I don't know Japanese. So I was singing by memory all the lyrics. Uh, but for me it was very important to follow like each di uh, direction of, of the director in, 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 in order to make uh, a, a consequent um, and logical but I was singing what, what I was expressing with my body. And then I, I, I began to work with several different uh, directors with different styles. And I learned uh, uh, in that way. Uh, and now opera is not uh, as it used to be like 40, 50 years ago. Now you are more, uh, very much obliged to be to be a very good actor, to know uh, how to move on stage, and you have to, you must be also uh, very uh, uh, capable to 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 work in this in this part in this side of, of opera. Yeah, and I think the that person was curious whether your favorite opera to sing in was different than your favorite opera to act in. Ah, and okay. I'm not sure, can you separate it like that as a singer yeah. or? Yeah, I, yeah, maybe, maybe I do, yes. For, for singing, I love Lucia. Also for acting, of course, because it has many, many colors, uh, mm -hmm. uh, character. Uh, I love acting uh, uh, L'Elisir d'Amore and I enjoy it. Like crazy, El Barbiere di Siviglia. Oh, fun! That's those yeah. are such great. I as 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 as, as a um, lyrical leggero tenor, I am more into this uh, repertoire, and in this repertoire, we have a lot of comedy. So it's, yeah. it's something I really enjoy very much. So I have a question, and then we'll start to wrap it up. But you were just now talking about moving you know, starting to change a little bit from doing purely bel canto work into the French repertoire. How do you make that decision? How does that, like, is it something that you feel vocally that you're ready for? Is it 
are you trying to, uh, yeah, how do you make a change like that or start that process? I, I must say that actually for, for uh, at the beginning of my career, like professional career, international in, uh, career, that was in Zurich. And the first chance I had for singing something, it was Italian in Algeri from Rossini. Even if before that, I never sang a Rossini opera. Hmm. And it was so hard for me, so complicated for me, because if I, I mean, now after eight uh, different roles in, in the Rossini repertoire, and I know maybe more, nine, or I don't remember how many, uh, I already know the style, I already, can move through the coloratura, which is the virtuosistic, virtuosistic part of Rossini. Uh, I always felt much more comfortable with Donizetti, as I already said uh, before, okay. which is a more uh, in the legato uh, kind of phrasing, and you know, with the melodies more horizontal and not so vertical, as happens with Rossini as well. So. Um, I had to prof I had to take what I had from for 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 work. So I had so, a lot of Rossini, but I had I was very lucky. I I had this uh, like I was fixed uh, singer in the Opera House in Zurich, because then there I had the chance of singing some other repertoire repertoire besides uh, the Rossini one. So I I could sing uh, I could sing um, La Fedeltà Premiata from Haydn. I sang La Finta Giardiniera from Mozart, and also from Mozart, I sang uh, Die Anführung of Adam Sarail, and um, Così Van Tutte. Uh, so, uh, um, Pearl Fishers. So, uh, while I was singing and, and making my voice flexible with Rossini, because that actually helps you to, to do that. Mm -hmm. All the bel canto repertoire helps you to to be always is like 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 the aerobics, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <You> right? <laughs> uh, keeps you flexible. Uh, is the yoga from opera, so it keeps you <laughs> flexible in in your voice. I was working on the other repertoire to begin to to really uh, have a, a a preview of, of the future in my repertoire. So. If I'm telling you, I, I, I sang already Maria Stuarda, which is a, a more, much more lyrical uh, uh, part, uh, the one from um, Leicester, Leicester. Uh, Puritani also with, uh, with Arturo. Mm -hmm. and, um, but those decisions to do those, those uh, operas were taking like three, four years before. Right. So the thing has always been to have this uh, sort of very, very humble, because I must say it's very humble and very like well-based new challenges and to build the each day the, 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 the way that will take me to that one. Right. Because when I decided to sing Puritani, it was like, okay, I am doing now Barbia di Sevilla, <laughs> I am doing Little in Algeria. And so this is going to be quite different. But I, I, I thought well, this is bel canto, and we had uh, similar uh, singers doing this same repertoire. So I have to trust that, and I have to do right what I have to do now in order to build that. That to be uh, ready for. So you're you're you know. working like here's what's happening in the next four months. Here's what's happening in the next three years, and you're you're constantly doing that, which I think is a great way for us to finish this conversation for our campers and our young people mm -hmm. to remember throughout your life that's that's the process right for any profession yeah. for me as a director i have to be thinking about well what pieces am i interested in working on now and what might i be working towards so then what language is my studying now to be ready to do that thing in three years. And it's a constant push and pull. And of course you have to be present and working hard where you are, but keeping in mind what might be down the road. Yeah, as you mm -hmm. said, this is the, the way the way up is not like like this. Right. <laughs> it's like this. Yes. Like this. And then maybe you'll stay like this a little bit and then you go again. 
Yeah. So you have to remember that in, in, in just not to feel frustrated uh, some sometimes because it can happen. So um, be aware of that. Enjoy every single moment on, on your process and live it and, and deliver yourself in the best way possible each day. Yeah. So I'm so thankful that I got to speak with you, Javier. Someday, I hope we get to be in a rehearsal room together <laughs> someday. Yeah. Um, but it's just fantastic. I always learn when I get to speak with you. And I love that you sang a little bit for us this morning, too. It was great. Oh, um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about what's coming up. And as I'm saying these things, Dan's going to pop them up onto our screen because I know tomorrow on Thursday at 12 o'clock Eastern time, New York city time, we have opera story time with star soprano Leah Hawkins. And I think there's another thing tomorrow that I'm supposed to remind everybody of, or maybe, oh, yeah, sorry, thank you. Career Corner with Susan and members of the Met uh, Costume Shop. That'll be at 1 p.m. And then Friday, June 26th at noon um, is our Camper Showcase. In the meantime, starting in uh, four hours from now, I believe, five hours from now, um, is when you can stream uh, Don Pasquale, and you can see it scrolling along the bottom of your um, screen. And if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at summercamp at medopera.org. We'll take your questions and somebody will answer them as soon as they can. Next week, I'll be back here with Eric Owens to speak about Rusalka. And I'm really excited. Eric and I have been in the rehearsal room together a number of times, so it'll be fun to hear more about his story um, because I think one of the things we find, and Javier made this point so brilliantly, is that everybody's path is different and you have to be willing to follow your path. Um, so thank you again, Javier. I hope all of your family and everybody is staying safe and that they're healthy and um, I was thinking about you yesterday when I heard about the earthquake in Mexico. So I hope everybody is safe. Yeah, thank God. Everybody in my family, I have, I have family in Oaxaca, which was the epicenter. Oh, okay. so, um, yeah, they are, they are fine. Also in Mexico City, everybody is, is okay. Uh, Good. Thank so um, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for, for asking. Thank you. All right, you guys take care. Enjoy your day. Enjoy Don Pasquale. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you, Cumpers. <laughs>